If you've bought my social media Canva templates, you'll know that I have two slides at the very beginning and they serve a very useful purpose for yourself. So the first one is just to make, make it easier for you to have some quick notes that I've left you, but then also when you edit it later, it makes it easier to find out of your grid of all of the Canva designs that you have. Um, so I usually kind of leave the topic very big. And then the next page is something that I recommend you do for almost every Canva template that you have if you have a lot of different pages in it. So this one has 26. And that is to have this little cheat sheet. Now I'm gonna show you how to both edit it or create your own. So if you need to edit it, you would just delete these logos and upload your own logos, whatever they might be. And that is just to get them on one page so it's easy for you to find because later on, once you've uploaded more and more things on the left-hand side, it's gonna be harder for you to find logos. Yes, you can use the search box. If you've named things well, that will do the trick for you. But if not, this keeps it handy while you're just scrolling inside your own thing. And I do recommend you have what I would call your normal logo. You probably want it to be transparent like this one. If you have a circle or other version that you use often, and then if you have an all white version and an all black version, this just helps you have it all in one place in one sitting. So when you're editing all of these things later on, if you just need a quick design, it's already handy for you. The next thing is changing your brand colors. Now, if you're starting from scratch, all you do is you go to elements and insert any shape. So I just chose squares because I chose squares. And what you're going to do is select your square, go to the color box, and you're gonna make sure you use a color that matches your brand. Now I have mine saved. You're gonna look for hexadecimal codes, which is six letters and or numbers that is that are following a hashtag or pound sign. Now, if you don't know what yours is, I recommend you get an extension. Right now I'm using Brave, but if you have Google Chrome or Safari, you can still get a web extension and I would search for one called Color Picker because then when you go to your website, and I'm just borrowing another Chambers website, when you click on the color picker after you have it installed as an extension, you click on it. For this one, it has me pick a color from web page. It looks like it goes away, but really, if you watch this little square box that's following my mouse cursor, it is letting me choose literally any color on this page. So I'm just gonna hover over, hover over one of the main colors. I click, the box went away, but that's because the eyedropper chose that color for me. So now I just copy, th this is the color, and I'm gonna go back to Canva. I've already clicked on my square and on my color, and now I'm gonna go to the plus sign so I can paste my original color and also, before you click away, pay attention, before you click away, where it says change all on the bottom left, you probably wanna do that. So now, it's actually changed my color across all of my pages. So this makes it really quick to customize these templates to your brand colors. Okay, so I've changed my three main colors and it's done it except for places where maybe I chose a funny one. And then the only thing that's different is actually text. You have to do it again for text. Doing the change all for these boxes only changes it in other shapes. So that still saved us a lot of time, but we also need to go and click on our texts. Um, I think it is, I already forgot. So, and this is where it's helpful if you have a bunch of colors, depending on what you've started, is I can go back to this square, 
click on it, click on the plus, and I know it's this color. So if you somehow end up with a lot of similar ones and it gets confusing, that's how I do that. So I'm gonna again click on this text. This is what I wanna change. Text color plus, paste it. And I'm going to, yep, again, change all, and this will change it for the text versions. Now the reason this particular one still looks funny is because this is an effect. So if I go to effects and go to none and then go back to splice, this is actually the default color for it. And that's just where I had manually chosen a different color. So um, let's do the same. Oh, and then the yellow. So this yellow was not a part of my brand color. It's an accent color. This was a design choice on my part. Uh, when I needed a pop of color or something to complement these, I wanna make sure it looks decent with each of these three colors, which is why I just made this line going across all the three boxes. This is never gonna be a main color for me. Um, but this is also really handy if you don't have three colors like this, this chamber palette does. So if I look at their logo, I could try to maybe pull out that peach and see if that looks good for them. Otherwise, And that looks okay, but it doesn't really pop. So what I actually recommend doing is just choosing a really bright accent color. So for this one, I had chosen gold, um, just something bright. It could be a blue. And just go through all the colors in the palette and see what looks best with your colors, but still stands out. So and then we're going to do it again with the text version. And then you can just scroll down through the templates to see if you actually like what it looked like. In this case, I like it in some places and not others. So you'll still have to play around just a little bit, but it should be a lot, lot quicker. So now I've got my logos, I've chosen my brand colors, and then I just like to put my own self reminder. So you can put the, the fonts that you normally use that match your website. So for them, I would look for just a sans serif that is kind of bold. You know, that's all I'm really taking away. There are some additional web extensions that will show you um, so right now, I don't know if you can tell, but it's telling me what these fonts are. And this is called Fear of Sands. That one's called Railway. And so if you happen to have those in Canva, that's great. I think Railway actually is one of the choices. And I can very quickly say Railway. I'm just typing it out. But then if I select it, I can search inside of Canva. And yep, that is an option. I don't think the other one is. Um, so I'm just going to type and I'm going to look for, again, I know that this is a sans serif and it's kind of thicker. So I'm actually just going to search the fonts inside of Canva and I'm just going to eyeball it and see what it looks kind of close. And really, I tend to use just the open sauce or open sands a lot of times, if I'm honest. So I think that's good enough where I have a big thick sands that looks kind of like this fear of sands, but it's not exact. I would also leave a personal note of whatever your hashtag is. So you can come up when you're working something down here, you can come up here and copy and paste that hashtag. And so this is a branded hashtag. So for me, I do my city and my state. So I do a location or the name of your chamber would be a branded one. And if you want like a list of other generic hashtags, you could put a list here. But for the images, you're probably only going to put one hashtag on an actual image. So you're probably just gonna leave the one. You could put the rest of these somewhere else um, when you're or using it when you're actually posting the image on social media. Um, but you can also put any other notes that you happen to need to keep in mind when you are designing anything. But again, I think this is just a handy, I call it a cheat sheet at the top. So if I'm working on a design down here and it's harder to find when I go into all of my files, I can actually just scroll to the top and there's all of my information. 
So if that was useful for you, do me a favor and hit that like button so I know. Or if it wasn't, leave a comment. Let me know why. Or let me know what you still have questions about. I really want to put out stuff that helps you specifically. My goal is to help you grow your chamber so you can focus on growing your impact in your community.